Well, keeping our focus on the PDP convention uh, in a matter of uh, uh, days from now. And uh, let Mark do the honors. Well, thank you, Gimba. It's less than 24 hours to the PDP a national elective convention recalled that it did hold a non-elective convention in August this year. Uh, but the test of fire uh, is today and tomorrow. And people would know whether or not the PDP is ready to come back as a strong opposition force. Well, joining us now to look at the modalities for this convention and uh, what the hurdles will be is Dr. Lito Kumbo Pierce, who is a member of the PDP. You're welcome to Sunrise Delhi. Good morning. Thanks and it's for having me. good to me. see you in Abuja. I'm glad to see you live after so many months. Oh, well, <clears throat> you're welcome again. So, what precisely? I mean, we know that the non elective convention was to prepare the ground for this elective convention, was to solidify and unify the party ahead of this uh, test of fire, I'd like sure. to call it. Uh, but so far, so good. It doesn't look to be going very well, or does it? I think that. Um, Things are not as bad as they appear to be. The August 12th, uh, 2017 non-elective convention was very impressive. There was a great show of unity. People paid their way to come. The atmosphere was very positive. The former president, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan, spoke very, very eloquently. And a lot of speakers, very encouragingly. And I think that uh, what you're getting now is... Uh, the type of uh, uh, wrangling and discussions and arguments that happen in a democracy where you allow people to express themselves, which PDP always does, and that's why it appears that we're always fighting. Uh, the disagreements we have now, particularly over microzoning or no microzoning, can be explained easily. There's some disagreement about it. People cannot all agree on the same issue all the time. So. I don't think that we're going to have a crisis at the convention. We are going to have a smooth convention. It's going to be very lively, <clears throat> as things, everything PDP is always so lively. Uh, but that's because people have freedom of expression and uh, they take a stand. But less than 24 hours to the date, I mean, the number of candidates are yet to narrow down. Uh, is, there seems to be a wrangling between the South-South and the Southwest. Even the candidates in the Southwest, they do not have a consensus, they don't have a common front. Um, how do you think that is going to pan out tomorrow? You know, uh, this is real democracy. All this talk about, you know, narrowing down candidates, this is what we did in the past which was a problem for us. If you want to have real democracy, let everybody come and exercise their right to vote, to be voted for. Um, <clears throat> all this talk about uh, narrowing down, uh, Southwest must have a consensus candidate is anti-democratic. We don't need it. Let everybody come and exercise their right to be voted for. Mm. That's what's going on. So this is not a major problem. But the number of people, I mean, the delegates who are going <clears throat> to be voting, uh, doesn't it, you know, make the chances slimmer for the Southwest? If, if amongst the Southwesterners, you know, votes are already divided, don't you think that it makes the chances slimmer? Let me, let me slimmer assure you, the way this is looking, even if there are 20 people coming from the Southwest, they are front runners and they are back runners. Some people running now have no vote except their own vote, if they have any. And they're talking about consensus. Why does one want to sit with anybody who doesn't really have anything to offer? When they go into voting, anybody who scores the highest amongst them will be the candidate. So it doesn't really matter whether there are 20 of them. Out of the people running, some of them will get very, very few votes. Who are the front runners in this battle <clears> for you? Definitely, if anywhere you look, whatever you read, is Professor Tunde Adeniro who is leading. By far, nobody comes close, as far as my own analysis goes. I may be prejudiced, I don't hide it, I will tell you that I am his Lagos State coordinator for his campaign. But, look at all the publications that you've seen. How much of a threat is Prince Uche <coughs> Sekondos? Who is coming from the <coughs> South South region? 
Let me tell you about what happened with this microzoning or no microzoning, which brought secondos out. The PDP has a formula, microzoning, or zoning positions, the south and the north. So what happened was the PDP zoned the chairmanship to the south. And after the zoning to the north and the south, there's another step, which is microzoning to different states within the north or the south. That is the gentleman agreement between those regions. So when the zoning of the chairmanship came to the south, we were supposed to meet and agree on which zone deserves it best for the sake of parity and equity and fairness. So the southern leaders met, the stakeholders met, and they said at the first meetings that the southwest has never been, nobody in the southwest has ever been national chairman of the PDP. Therefore, it was only proper to allow the southwest aspirants to contest for it. The southeast agreed. We thought that everybody had agreed until some candidates, some aspirants from the South South, like Secundus, uh, Chief Dr. C said they were interested in contesting and they were not interested in respecting the zoning formula, the subzoning.